Hey, it's me, Casey, and I got a question for you. Feel like having a little adult fun with me? I hope you said yes, because the Steam Room guys and I just put out two adult coloring books. Yeah, sexy illustrations of male-male romance with naughty, hilarious captions. It's called Bromantic Bliss, and it's a hoot. Two sexy, silly, sassy coloring books that are sure to entertain you for hours. You can find them on Amazon or the SteamyStoriesPodcast.com website. Check them out and let me know what you think. I hope you love them and start coloring. Now, on with the show. Beckett, known on air as DJ Riff Ranger, was a disc jockey at a small radio station in Arkansas. Blessed with rock star good looks, his late-night work schedule and shy, unassuming demeanor unfortunately dampened his prospects of ever finding a boyfriend. One night, teetering on the brink of giving up on love entirely, he noticed an envelope at the station containing an invitation from a local musician playing a nearby gig. Should he go? Could this be an opportunity to socialize and meet other people his age? After much deliberation... Beckett decided to attend the show. Much to his surprise and delight, the singer was remarkably sexy, and his songs touching and emotional. Halfway through the set, the two men's eyes locked. A wry smile from the songsmith made it clear to Beckett that this evening would undoubtedly be ending on a high note. Hey everyone, it's me, Casey, and welcome back to the show. Today's steamy story is about a small town DJ who stumbles upon a hunky musician from the big city. Together, these two songsters manage to get themselves into a bit of treble. Yeah, I know. So, relax, get comfy, and forgive me for the puns as we settle in and I spin you a yarn about a DJ who has just about given up on looking for love. Well, just about. Beckett's passion was music. He had always dreamed of playing in a band, but the thought of performing in front of a crowd was unimaginable to him. At 29, his lean, toned frame and eye-catching good looks hinted at the rock star he could have been. Instead, Beckett's love for music found an outlet in the private rock sessions he held in his garage. Every afternoon was dedicated to hammering out beats on his vintage drum set. Right after, he'd journey five miles down the dusty, deserted road of his small Arkansas town to the slightly larger city of Witts Springs. There, he worked the midnight shift at a small local radio station. Beckett was well aware that his show reached a small audience, but it didn't bother him. Ever since his graduation from Arkansas State University, he had been working at the station, the only job he had ever known and loved. Since he lacked the courage to perform live, Beckett decided to express his love for music by introducing new, exciting bands to the world, even if his efforts went unnoticed or unappreciated. Shortly after 1 a.m., he set up his second block of commercial-free radio. Beckett retreated into a dimly lit room with his phone, as music from the latest indie band he'd discovered filled the station. Often he would distract himself with a popular dating app, as his songs played on the background. He'd browse through profiles, hoping to meet a sweet, intelligent man. But his hopes were slim. The town was full of familiar faces— none of which he had a remote interest in. Thus, he rarely went out. The possibility of meeting someone seemed very remote. Resigned to a single life, Beckett sat quietly, browsing through profiles, when he noticed a small envelope propped up against his microphone. Mail? In this digital age, who sends snail mail anymore? His initial instinct was to discard the envelope. Yet, with time to spare that night, he decided to open it. Inside the envelope was a flyer featuring a strikingly handsome man with a guitar. 
Beckett's first impression was that it was an ad for a musical instrument. Upon further inspection, he realized it was an invitation from the musician himself, inviting him to a gig. The flyer read, I was hoping you'd be my guest as I present my new album at McNutley's Tavern this Saturday night. The artist's name was Austin. He immediately marked the gig on his calendar. Beckett was excited when the weekend finally arrived, since he rarely ventured out to bars, clubs, or cinemas anymore. His journey to McNutley's Tavern took approximately an hour. His remote residence made everything seem far away. The small country road, desolate and dark, which connected the city centers, was eerily spooky amidst the dank air. Upon arriving at the bar, he found a small queue of sharply dressed twenty-somethings eagerly waiting to get inside. The prospect of a crowded venue briefly made him uneasy. However, given the distance back home, Beckett was committed to this outing. He summoned the courage to enter the bar. Fortunately, the interior was spacious and welcoming, which quickly put him at ease. After ordering a beer, Beckett secured a small table near the stage. As he tried to blend in, he took in his surroundings and thought, So, this is what a night out in the city feels like. Plenty of attractive men and women. Everyone seems to be enjoying themselves. Maybe I should socialize more often. Almost immediately, the lights dimmed and a spotlight illuminated the modest stage. From behind a dark wood-paneled wall, Austin emerged. He sauntered towards the two microphones and a stool at center stage, his gaze bashful as he picked up his acoustic guitar. Wow, quite a crowd, he said. It's always a pleasure to play to a full house. I hope you'll enjoy my new album. It's truly from the heart. I wrote it after my most recent breakup. My heart was shattered into a thousand pieces, and the only solace I found was in my music. So, I won't lie, I feel uh, exposed sharing this with you, but isn't that what songwriting is about? I hope that something beautiful can emerge from the ugliness I've endured. Enjoy the evening with me. Without further ado, Austin launched into his set. Accompanied only by his acoustic guitar, his performance was magical. A hush enveloped the crowd for the next 45 minutes, broken only by the occasional clinking of bottles as the bartender prepared orders. Austin laid his heart bare to the audience through his touching melodies. There were moments when Beckett felt a powerful urge to shed a tear or two, but he resisted any public display of emotion. Yet, inwardly, he mourned for the heartache this beautiful, tormented man had endured. As Austin's final melody ended, it elicited thunderous applause from the crowd. A mixture of friends and strangers alike quickly showed their appreciation for an evening of remarkable entertainment. Austin gently placed his guitar back on its stand and ambled towards a nearby bar stool, ordering a pint. His relief was evident as he pressed the icy glass against his forehead, a much-needed reward after such an emotionally and physically taxing performance. Beckett watched quietly as several appreciative individuals thanked Austin for a delightful evening. Once the pleasantries were exchanged, the group dispersed, leaving Austin to unwind alone at the bar. Beckett found himself stealing subtle glances at the captivating troubadour. Austin's heartfelt melodies and touching lyrics only amplified the allure of this striking young guitarist. Beckett could feel a flush creeping up his face at the sight of the handsome musician. Should he approach and say hello? Despite his best efforts, Beckett found himself unable to summon the courage to express his admiration for Austin's talents. Beckett's prolonged staring at Austin at the bar must have been quite apparent, though. On several occasions, Austin glanced over at Beckett and smiled. Their eyes met multiple times, but 
each instance found Beckett quickly averting his gaze, pretending to innocently survey the room rather than helplessly admiring the man who was swiftly capturing his heart. There was one particularly lingering moment when Austin winked and raised his beard towards Beckett, as if to say, Thanks for coming. However, yet again, Beckett looked away, too shy to engage. The aging waitress unknowingly interrupted their wordless exchange as she unceremoniously slid Beckett's check onto the table, stating flatly, You can pay that now if you want. Beckett promptly pulled several $20 bills from his money clip, smiling as he said, uh, No need for change. Keep it. Thank you for a wonderful evening. The waitress managed a thin smile before briskly moving to the next table. Time to go. It's a long drive home, Beckett thought, grabbing his phone and keys from the small table before hurrying out the door, avoiding further eye contact. The next day, Beckett found himself consumed with thoughts of Austin's heartfelt songs from the previous night at the tavern. The raw honesty and emotion in every lyric, coupled with a simple yet intricate melody, had truly impressed him. The image of the handsome, well-built musician on stage, clad in skinny jeans, a black button-up shirt, and sporting shaggy hair, set Beckett's heart pounding throughout the day. It wasn't until he arrived at the radio station that night that he felt inspired to share Austin's music with his listeners. He found the new album online with ease and promptly purchased it. He began his set by telling his listeners, If you haven't yet discovered this incredible artist, you're in for a treat tonight. His name is Austin, and he's an impressive new talent. That night became one of Beckett's favorites at the station, as he got to relive the previous evening through Austin's voice and also discovered earlier tracks of Austin's he hadn't known. The night passed quicker than expected, and Beckett eagerly locked up the station, anticipating dreams of Austin when he reached home. Before work the following day, he went about his familiar routine of gym, laundry, emails, and drum practice. As Beckett played his drums to a backing track, he began to question his life trajectory. Would he ever meet someone special? Get married? And what about work? Radio was dying. Nobody listened to his station, and soon they would literally pull the plug on his transmitter. After preparing a quick dinner, Beckett settled down in front of the TV. He thought, Maybe a horror movie will distract me from these silly romantic musings. A good old-fashioned scare might be just what I need to shake off this mood. A few clicks on the remote later, Beckett was enjoying a meal accompanied by a zombie film. Time slipped away as he became engrossed in the movie. As someone who didn't usually watch horror films, Beckett found himself more engaged than usual. When his watch alarm sounded, indicating it was time to leave for work, he yelped and jumped in surprise. Laughing at his own silliness, he switched off the movie and prepared to head for his shift. The station was eerily quiet. Not a soul stirred on the streets. The air was still, the night dark. As Beckett dropped the needle on a vinyl album from 1964, his imagination began to churn. Why hadn't it ever occurred to him before how desolate and frankly creepy this place was? Nestled in the middle of nowhere, this tiny town seemed almost ghostly. If a drifter with ill intentions were to stumble into town, this radio station would make the perfect location for a murder scene, akin to the zombie horror film he just watched. As Beckett's paranoia escalated, his choice of increasingly morose music fueled his wild imagination. Now I understand why I never watched those silly movies. They plant ridiculous thoughts in my head, he thought to himself. As he swapped out records, a distant, strange noise echoed from outside. 
Could it be a car door in the parking lot? No, nobody ever comes this far out of town. There's no reason for anyone to show up here at this ungodly hour. Besides, this little radio station isn't even on the map. I'm just being paranoid, he reassured himself. Suddenly, an eerie squeak and clank resonated through the station's distant hallway. Was that a sound? Who's there? This place is locked. There's no way anyone could get in here. Silence. Nothing stirred for several minutes. Beckett burst out laughing at his own fear. <laughs> What's gotten into me today? He chuckled. Leaning back in his dilapidated office chair, he pulled out a time-worn album from an old crate and studied the liner notes from the record sleeve. Chill out. Just occupy your mind with something else, he decided. Suddenly, the door swung open with a forceful swoosh, bouncing off the wall and recoiling back onto the man entering. Beckett shrieked. The sound that erupted from his throat was akin to that of a murder victim from the zombie movie he'd watched earlier. His heart leapt as he involuntarily jumped in his seat in fright. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you or, or make such a racket. The dark figure apologized sincerely. As Beckett tried to catch his breath, he managed to utter the question, Who are you? Oh my god, I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you or, or make such a racket. The dark figure apologized sincerely. As Beckett tried to catch his breath, he managed to utter the question, Who are you? Why are you here? The silhouetted figure continued, I'm just here looking for DJ Riff Ranger. I think his real name is Beckett? As the imposing figure stepped into the dim light of the station, the voice became familiar. Again, super sorry. Are you DJ Riff Ranger? The man asked, now clearly recognizable as Austin, the singer from the tavern the other night. Beckett quickly stood from his worn-out chair, forcing a smile as he tried to make sense of Austin's unexpected visit. Yes, that's me. Don't worry about startling me. i am just been jumpy all night. I just watched a scary movie and my mind was playing tricks on me. Austin chuckled. Dude, I get it. I can't watch movies like that. They freak me out. I'm a total scaredy cat about that stuff. Beckett laughed. <laughs> Apparently, me too. He was starting to feel better but was still bewildered about why Austin was at this station at this late hour. I can't believe you're here, or that you could get into the building. What's going on? he asked. Austin shyly looked around the relic of a radio station and bashfully answered, The door was unlocked. I figured it was okay to just come in. I wanted to say hi and meet DJ Ranger in person. Thank him for playing my album the other night. Beckett's heart still pounded in his chest, not from the initial scare, but from the sight of this studly rocker standing before him, in torn, perfectly fitting jeans and a Viper Room sleeveless tee that just fit a tad too tightly on the arms, giving his well-defined biceps that extra edge. Austin continued, if you're the DJ, then you should know that I've been a fan of yours for years. I've been listening to you ever since I moved here. You're a breath of fresh air in this stale, stagnant town. Beckett was more shocked than flattered. He needed to know more about this captivating singer. Doing his best to be calm, cool, and casual, he asked, So, where are you from? And how did you even hear about my station? Austin chuckled, revealing two adorable dimples that, until this moment, had lain dormant. Everyone knows about DJ Ranger in this station. It's famous. 
That's why it was such a huge deal when you played my album last night. My phone's been blowing up, and I'm booking gigs left and right. Beckett started to feel like he was being played. The sweet, seemingly honest, charming singer was now trying to make him look foolish. You're hilarious, and maybe you do listen to my station, but apart from that, I think you're just making fun of me now. That said, I do think it's sweet that you came by to thank me for playing your song. I genuinely love your music, and think you're an amazing musician. Beckett wasn't sure if Austin was being rude or distracted, but halfway through his compliment, he started scrolling through his phone. Dude, look. Austin held up his phone displaying a website he had quickly searched for. You're listed as the number one DJ on all three of these social media sites. I wish I had a hundredth of the likes you have on these posts. Beckett looked at the phone in disbelief. He was right. There were message boards, rock magazine articles, and even social media fan clubs. What was the deal? He had no idea. Beckett was stunned as he sat back down in his worn leather chair. I've been wanting to meet you ever since I moved here from Los Angeles about five years ago. I graduated from UCLA, and then my grandmother fell ill. No one else from the family could leave LA to take care of her, so I became her caretaker. You can write songs from anywhere, right? So why not here? Beckett instantly recognized the frustrations of being a musician in a town where there were no other artists, no one to jam with, just a young, lonely man with his guitar and love of music. Well, uh, like I said, you're an amazing artist, and I'm humbled that you made the trip to see me and meet me in person. Austin innocently diverted his gaze as he confessed, I have to say, I'm freaking out just a little bit, just being here. Not only because you're the hottest DJ I've ever heard, but also you're the sexy guy to whom I was singing in the tavern the other night. I had no idea you were the same person. Beckett again wondered if he was being toyed with, but then quickly realized that Austin was serious. Upon reflection... Austin did, in fact, focus most of his attention on Beckett when singing the other night. Moreover, when Austin sat by the bar by himself after his set, several glances and coy smiles were exchanged. Still, Beckett never thought it was more than a hunky lead singer acknowledging an apparent fan. Austin spun a small wooden chair backwards and sat down, facing Beckett. His legs opened as he straddled the chair, his arms crossed as he leaned against the back support, pumping his already bulging biceps even more. So, it looks like we're fans of one another and both lovers of the same kind of music. How about that? Now, if I were to learn you were also a drummer, you'd be the perfect man for me. Beckett's breath grew shallow. He couldn't even reply to that statement without sounding insane or overly enthusiastic. He had no idea what to say back to him, so he just tried to play it cool as he responded, Yes, that would be something. Austin couldn't help but give a wry smile as he softly asked, When I arrived, did you think I was just another sex-starved young musician trying to seduce the hotshot DJ so he'd play his tracks? Beckett leaned back confidently as he teased, I didn't think you were sex-starved, but that's good information to have. As far as thinking that you were here to proposition me so I'd play your tracks again, uh, one could have only hoped. With a chuckle and a wink, Austin inquired. So, what's the songsmith do to get on heavy rotation here at the station? Beckett's heart raced. He struggled to remain cool, calm, and collected, as he flatly stated, I should warn you that I actually am a drummer, and to be honest, a pretty good one. It seems it's now time for you to realize that I may just be perfect for you. 
Beckett couldn't finish the last line of his flirtation as Austin sprang forward and pressed his lips against his. Beckett's shock turned into delight as he reached around Austin and grabbed him tightly. The two men refused to break the lip lock that bound them as they stood from their respective chairs and flopped onto the leather couch situated in the corner of the room. Austin peeled his shirt over his head, revealing a defined, ripped chest. Beckett returned the favor as he tore open his dress shirt, the pop buttons cascading across the room. Austin playfully pinned Beckett down on the couch as he wrapped his legs around Beckett's hips. Again, they kissed deeply, careful not to break the connection between their hungry, eager mouths. Finally, each of the men playfully paused for a much-needed breath, as Austin teased with a glint in his eye. I can't wait to get you inside my recording studio. I've been looking for a drummer forever. Maybe tomorrow, after we have breakfast, we can jam? Beckett playfully responded. Sure. That is, if you're not too exhausted from staying up all night having sex. Austin didn't miss a beat as he baited, I'm a lead guitarist in a rock band. That's what we do. It sounds like Austin really struck a chord with Beckett. It doesn't sound like Beckett's gonna be soloing anymore. Instead, I'm sure they played beautiful music together after that night. This is your host, Casey, and you're listening to Steamy Stories, the podcast where bromance turns... Uh, bromosexual. I hope you enjoyed today's torrid tale. It was inspired by a real-life DJ, who informed us he had lots more stories like this to share with us. We can't wait for him to tell us what other steamy stories happened in his DJ booth. Tune in next month when I bring you another steamy story, written by J.C. Calciano and narrated by me, Casey. But until then... Later, bro.